let's talk about the theistic lens. This is another video for Godless Cranium if you care to hear it. This is a kind of indirect response to a video you recently made when you said that the uh, theistic lens is a, uh, you know, twist the view. It's a skewed view of the world. Well, let's talk about it. Yeah, let's talk about it. Before we jump into the video, I just wanted to let you know that a number of subscribers told me they didn't get notified of my last upload, even if they had clicked the bell. I could spend the next few minutes raging about how frustrating that is, especially when you spend hours out of your day to create content, but that wouldn't be very productive. So instead, I'd like to say that if you use Twitter at all, please consider following me there. I usually tweet about new uploads and it really is the best spot to get in touch with me. The link is in the description. Alrighty, let's see what the disillusionist has to say about theistic lenses. Right away, let me get this out of the way. As a Christian, in a Christian lens, I don't mean like random theism, I mean in a Christian lens. You know, uh, the Ten Commandments dictates what is good and evil. It's quite apparent and you don't question it. <clears throat> so it's actually quite easy to see something. We find it reprehensible if someone's murdered or, you know, if someone steals because it says so. The Ten Commandments are junk. <laughs> they really are. God was more concerned with graven images and taking his name in vain than he was with slavery, child rape, or any number of other things he could have addressed. The punishments for breaking the commandments are barbaric, to say the least. For example, Exodus 31.15 commands that whoever does any work on a Sabbath day is to be put to death. Cursing your mother or your father also carries with it the death sentence. Bottom line is that if you're going to, bottom line is that if you're going to the Ten Commandments for your ethics, you might want to rethink your strategy. And there's times as people we want to steal or even kill. Uh, nope. The uh, killing thing hasn't really occurred to me. But we have these guidelines that say that's never the right answer and there will always be consequences because that is wrong. Now, just get past that. I am a unique Christian. I have the ability to take off my theistic lens. Oh my no, God! No, God, please, no! 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 So I'll just do that right now. I'm going to look at it as an atheist because I have went through a period to where I really had seen the world as an atheist. These are the things I discovered. What is good and evil? No such thing. It is a, a social construct. So is your religion. People wrote your religion. People enforced the rules those people put into place. They were enforcing a human-made social construct. The good news is that we don't have to follow the barbaric nonsense found in that social construct. In fact, you don't. Otherwise, you'd be out murdering anyone who works on Sunday or talks back to their parents. The winners of the wars dictate what is good and evil. So to say, if, say, Adolf Hitler would have won World War II, Auschwitz may not be so frowned upon. His name would not be demonized to the degree that it is. We would have a different worldview. So it's all a social construct. I'd be frowning a great deal, because I'd likely be in one of those camps, unless the Nazis had killed my family before I was born. There were also German people who resisted the Nazis. I don't know if you know this, but a large percentage of the world fought a war to prevent the Nazis from carrying out their plans. And yes, there are and have been societies that incentivize what I would consider to be unethical acts. Hell, I think there are aspects of my own culture that I think incentivize unethical behavior, or behavior I think is less good than it could be. Not on the scale of Nazi Germany, but there's still things I wish would change. For example, we often praise people who buy art for hundreds of millions of dollars, but I think an argument can be made that doing so is a waste of resources, and it would be better to praise those who give money to charity. That doesn't mean we stop people who want to buy art for ridiculous amounts of money, but it does mean that if society valued giving to charity in the same way as we currently value the accumulation of excess wealth and material possessions, we'd likely see a shift in human behavior. I think that shift would promote a happier, healthier, more ethical outcome than the one we currently live in. But regardless, I think our ethics as a species evolve slowly over time. And I think if you value human well-being, human happiness, human flourishing, etc., then the Nazi paradigm cannot survive over the long term. Ironically, I also think this is part of the reason religion will eventually die out or be shoved to the fringes of society. It often promotes bigotry, tribalism, and hatred towards certain groups. And we are evolving better social constructs than Christianity that are better equipped to promote human flourishing. So I, I would ask you, Godless Cranium, why do you not kill people? Because I only assume you don't. And you probably don't steal either. Why not? What's wrong with that? Is it because you feel like that's not a good thing? You feel guilt about it? Is it because the law says? Because the law is dogma. I don't kill and steal because I live in a community. 
Part of it's selfish. I don't want to be murdered or stolen from, and so I'd rather live in a society that condemns such actions and punishes those who do those things. Part of it is because I want people to trust me. If I'm a known thief, then it stands the reason people aren't going to trust me very much. Part of it is that it's not the person I want to be. When I picture the kind of person I want to strive to be, the picture of a murdering thief isn't what jumps to my mind. And yes, part of it is guilt or my conscience. I feel empathy and that prevents me from harming other people quite often, either physically or emotionally. That same empathy makes me feel good when something I do contributes to putting a smile on someone's face or making their life easier in some way. There are all kinds of reasons why I don't murder and steal, but there's just a few of them. It was based on those Ten Commandments. So anytime you, you know, if you're just worried about breaking the law, well, you're still held under, under theism. You're held under dogma, man, no matter what. If you live within the bounds of this. No. Theism is the belief in a deity. I don't believe in a god or gods. Theism lends dogma more weight because it tells you that these are the words of a deity and shouldn't be questioned. We question laws all the time. We change laws all the time. We encourage people to think about laws and their unethical implications. I wouldn't consider laws to necessarily be dogmatic. Certainly not in the same way that we think of religious dogmatism. I would see. If I went full atheist. Sweet Jesus, you're about to say something horrible, aren't you? To improve myself in whatever way I could, law notwithstanding. Honestly. Like, you know, to say, I honestly would be a gangster. I would be things like that. I always looked up to gangsters, you know, in my carnal self. It's, it always looked cool, and I know I'd be quite good at it. Because I'm a pretty smart guy, and I can be very ruthless the person that I am. I'm not the greatest guy, I'm here to tell you. You know, uh, so, yeah, I would be a stone-cold gangster, and then anybody that gets in my way can be dispatched. I could justify these things because there is no God, there is no real morality. This is about me. Oh my, it was worse than I had imagined. Please, 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 keep believing in your God if this is honestly the way you think when not wearing your theistic lenses. My improvement. Now, say if I went and steal from somebody, I, surely I can do that because there's nothing wrong with it. I don't, I don't go under theistic belief. But if I steal from somebody and then they choose to kill me because of it, they also, they have their right to self-improvement. So if they choose to find revenge, you know, take it out on me, then by God, they should be able to, well. There are plenty of secular philosophies that do a very good job of explaining why you shouldn't steal or murder. Your idea that stealing and killing is a form of self-improvement is very troubling. Scary, even. Ever since I was a kid, I've asked myself this question. Is this something I'm going to be proud of when I'm lying on my deathbed? I sometimes picture myself lying on that deathbed, thinking about the life I had led, and I know there will be plenty of things I won't be proud of, some things I'll feel shame about. But my goal is to limit those and maximize the times that I did do something I can feel good about. That's my idea of self-improvement, overcoming those traits that will lead me to feeling more shame at the end of my life. Yours seems to be murdering and stealing for your own benefit, even though that will likely lead to misery, distrust by your peers, violence, suffering, and if you feel any empathy at all, guilt. I'll take my way, thanks. By no God, they should be able to do that too. I don't see, you know, like, we would just need to change the laws in general. Like, uh, we need to get rid of some of these overbearing dogma, like, uh, for example, like coveting neighbor, the neighbor's wife now, that's not illegal anymore. Used to be. You know, you couldn't like shack up with someone's wife without going to jail for it back in the day. But that's been taken away. And that's because a lot of people think that that's just religious bigotry. Well, so is thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal. Need to take that out. What a ridiculous comparison. So you think murdering and stealing are the same as a thought crime? Because coveting doesn't mean you're actually shacking up with the other person. It just means you think about it or desire it in some way. But even if you do think it means sleeping with one another, you think two consenting adults sleeping together is the same as taking someone's life? Wives aren't property, and while I agree that cheating on a spouse is unethical, I don't think people should be jailed for doing so. There are also plenty of relationships where two consenting adults agree to have an open marriage, and if that's what they want to do, then I don't see the harm. Under your system, according to Deuteronomy 22.22, both people should be put to death because God said so. Because that's what God decreed in the Old Testament. Moses came with these tablets. Now, whether you believe this happened or not, this is still how it was written and what people believe. So it's theistic. You know, forget that noise, man. Might is right. 
survival of the fittest. We are just evolved animals. Animals don't understand morality. They don't. They, they can seek revenge. They can do all sorts of shit, man. And, and again, morality is a bereft notion. This is a social damn construct. Actually, many scientists believe that other animals are capable of moral conduct. Many mammals, for example, display a sense of fairness and empathy, which allows them to work in groups. I'll leave a few links in the description box in case you're interested. But if anyone is promoting might is right here, it would be theists. It's you who are arguing that if God says it must be so, then it must be right because he's the most powerful entity in the universe. Not me. And I, I have to ask, though, do, I don't because I really don't know how far you see good, evil, bad, whatever. Godless cranium. I really don't know. I don't know if you respond to me or if like you give me a comment back or something. I would like to know your take on this. Why is it that you're a law abiding citizen? Because I'm, I'm assuming you are. The sound of your voice sounds like a law abiding citizen and young, very young. So uh, there's that. I didn't know that the sound of your voice could give away whether or not you're a criminal. <laughs> Good to know. However, I think I've already answered your question. Next. And I, I just, I think that you, you probably live a very good first world life and that you've probably never been to jail and all this other stuff. Not been in and out a lot. So, uh, but I'm a Christian. See, I, I have shirked my own faith to go follow myself and get myself into trouble over the years. It would seem like my social construct has worked better than yours then, since you've been in jail and can't seem to figure out why murdering and stealing are wrong without an ancient book. Well, I'm not a criminal and have no problem figuring it out. I'm telling you, man, I'm just, just let me sum it up. You better be glad that some people have a theistic lens, because when I said I'd be a gangster, if I didn't, I would have been. I would, you would never have seen me on this damn YouTube channel. I would be underground worth millions of dollars, killing people left and right, trafficking shit. I mean, the sky's the limit. I would be willing to kill anyone that got in my way, whether it be law enforcement, whether it be military. I would have my own military. I'd have my own private island. I mean, I'm telling you, dude. Uh, I'm telling you. Because I know how to get it illegally. Tony, Tony Montana style crossed with the devil. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because, again, I'm not a good guy. I can be violent. I am aggressive. But, man, when I put on what we call the mind of Christ... You understand what good and evil is and we fight against this carnal nature to do wicked things because we all have it we you're right there i am glad you have that theistic mindset if that's how you truly think I, I just wanted to share and i hope you know we can have a some sort of discourse about this you know maybe we could live stream a debate or something i i don't know care i don't know if you would care to waste your time with me but i'm not your average christian i'm not the one that you know you, I'm a thinker. I'm not, I'm not like these guys that that make that just say the dumbest shit about theism. Now, let's do this, if you want. But have a great day, man. I, I don't really don't. You've treated me with respect, so I don't want to be too off-putting. Have a wonderful day. Sure, I could book you on my podcast, The Heathen Hour, and Shannon could moderate. I think it would be an interesting discussion, but I also think it wouldn't hurt if you talked to a mental health professional. I'm not qualified to diagnose anyone, and I'm not saying you're mentally ill, but it might help to have someone to talk to if you're struggling with these sorts of violent thoughts. Anyhow, thanks for watching, take care, and cheers. I wanna hold it like they're doing with the priest Read it and believe in it until I am deceased I love it And this thing we're singing about isn't really lame It is the book, the holy book, the word of his name Oh, 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 oh I'll never stop, keep it in my heart Oh, 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 oh Oh, 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 I'll never stop, keep it in my heart Must love him, must love him, you must love his holy faith Keep it in your heart forever Must love him, must love him, you must love his holy faith 
keep it in your heart forever. Uh-huh, holy faith, ha uh-huh, ha, holy faith. Uh-huh, holy faith, ha uh-huh, ha, holy faith. I've been with you since God knows when. You pick me up at the club and then. You take me home, invite me. Go down and we begin